Hello. Peace. Namaste. I'm Red Feather Free, the dragon. Thank you for tuning in today. Today's video is going to be about the nature of the universe, its fundamental, true nature, and that is in the mathematical or geometric sense. And as a professed Pythagorean, I believe that Pythagoras is modeled of the Tetractus. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 10 gives us the base set that the decimal system is founded off of, that Leibniz gives us you know, um, binary code from. We can compute infinity and irrational numbers based of all this, but it goes much, much, much deeper. It gives us the keys to unlock sacred geometry. So when I talk about symbols and religious things, actually when I talk about anything, what I want you to understand is the entire universe is a fractal. We are all one. Meaning that the universe is not different. It only appears different. It's only shades of the same thing. So what is a fractal? According to the fractalfoundation.org, a fractal is a never-ending pattern. Fractals are infinitely complex patterns that are self-similar across different scales. They are created by repeating a simple process over and over in an ongoing feedback loop. Driven by recursion, fractals are images of dynamic systems, the pictures of chaos. Geometrically, they exist in between our familiar dimensions. Fractal patterns are extremely familiar, since nature is full of fractals. For instance, trees, rivers, coastlines, mountains, clouds, seashells, hurricanes, etc. In fact, everything is a fractal. Abstract fractals, such as the Mendelbrot set, can be generated by a computer calculating a simple equation over and over. Now, nature's simple equation that Pythagoras cracked and gave to us is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Repeated over and over gives us the Pythagorean tree of life, which is a fractal. So, there's also hardcore physics to back up the idea that the entire universe is a fractal. In an article published in Nature News, Nature.com, by Ron Cohen, published December 2013, it talks about the theoretical physicist Juan Maldacena, who proposed that an audacious model of the universe in which gravity arises from infinitesimally small, thin, vibrating strings, otherwise known as string or M-theory, could be reinterpreted in the term of well-established physics, meaning the mathematically intricate world of strings, which exist in nine dimensions of space plus one of time, would be merely a hologram. The real action would play out in a simpler, flatter cosmos where there is no gravity. This is possible, perhaps. There's a new system known as tetrionics, which has just came to the fore, which I'm beginning to study, and I think could quite possibly hold the keys to uniting planar geometry, Euclidean geometry, and quantum standard model physics all together, based off of the Tetractus model. But the further reason I want to make this video is because I had a personal revelation while on a shamanic journey. During an internal vision process, I saw clearly what intuitively I felt to be the, the true nature of the universe at its most basic level, and it was a golden tetrahedron pyramid that was transparent, semi-transparent, and inside it was another tetrahedron nested inside, and as I got closer to the outside of the one, it faded away, and the, the one inside grew larger and larger, and, and then I faded into it, and it had another one inside it, and on and on and on, Ouroboros, Klein bottle, into infinitum was the nature of the universe. And this led me to the realization of the platonic solids and the theory put forth by Robert James Moon. And you can go to Wikipedia's page. And James Moon was from a rural background, it says. He arrived at the University of Chicago at age 16 in 1928. He earned a PhD in physical chemistry under William Draper, Draper Harkins and then a doctorate in uh, physics. In the 1930s, Moon built one of the first cyclotrons in the world, with many improvements over the devices built by Ernest Lawrence. During World War II, he played a key role in the Manhattan Project. Afterwards, he constructed the first scanning X-ray microscope. Um, his study of electrodynamic theory led him to reconsider the usual interpretation of the Rutherford scattering data, which ignores the variation in force between charged particles as a result of relative velocities and accelerations. Calculations based on the Weber electrodynamics forced Moon to reconceptualize most of what what is still today taken for granted in atomic and nuclear physics. The moon model 
1984-1986 period, Moon came up with the proposal for a geometric, geometric ordering of protons and neutrons in the atomic nucleus based on nested platonic solids. This Moon model was inspired by Johannes Kepler's conception of the solar system as described in Kepler's work Mysterium Cosmographicum, and that must have been based off of Plato's work The Republic. In the tenth chapter it gives you spheres within spheres. It describes the solar system and the cosmos and how it works and how it sings and there are frequencies, the Schumann resonance for instance. The platonic solids, just so we're told, are five basic geometric figures which correspond to the proton and electron orbitals of atoms, as was just described in the moon theory. And these platonic solids are called platonic solids, although they were originally discovered by Pythagoras. And in the web Wikipedia webpage on platonic solids, it says, in Euclidean geometry, a platonic solid is a regular convex polyhedron with congruent faces of regular polygons and the same number of faces meeting at each vertex. Five solids meet those criteria and each is named after its number of faces. The tetrahedron, the cube, the octahedron, the dodecahedron, and the isosahedron. This is the fundamental nature of the universe. It comes from the monad, the one, then the two, then the three, then the four, make the ten. Thus, the Pythagorean secret has been revealed. Amen. Thanks to the Almighty Father. May this message bless you. Please share this information to all you know. Peace. We are all one. Namaste.